a landing over a hill with only inches to spare. The world's shortest runway, a beach where jet engines blow harder than the ocean breeze? Keep watching to see what it's like to travel to these extreme airports in the Caribbean. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from GreenerGrass.com. Welcome to the island of St. Martin. From here, you can fly to two of the world's most extreme airports. From St. Martin, we flew for 10 exhilarating minutes to St. Bart, where we stayed for a few days. Then, we returned to St. Martin and flew to Seba, home to the world's shortest commercial runway. And it was the departure out of Seba, the last flight of the trip, that was by far the most exciting. First up, St. Martin. Its runway is 7,500 feet long. At one end is Maho Beach in the Simpson Bay Lagoon. On the other, mountains, necessitating a steep right turn just after takeoff. St. Martin is a haven for aviation enthusiasts. From the world-famous Maho Beach, it's possible to watch airplanes in their final approach into the island's 7,500-foot runway. Does St. Martin offer the best beach for aviation enthusiasts? <laughs> you tell me. Wow, this uh, Max is about to go. Can't, this, this is what I live for. Don't underestimate the power of those engines. It cost one guy his hat. And as incredible as this place is, it's got nothing on our next stops. But before leaving St. Martin, a visit to the Sunset Beach Bar is a must. The views are hard to beat. It's time to move on, and reaching St. Bart requires visitors to either take a ferry or endure one of the most exhilarating experiences in aviation. St. Bart's runway is challenging. At only 2,100 feet, it's obstructed at one end by a hill that requires an unusual approach, which demands special training for pilots landing here. So back in St. Martin, we boarded this Cessna caravan for our 10-minute flight. When the winds are just right, like they are today, the approach into St. Bart's can be one of the most extreme. It requires pilots to essentially cross over that hill and then dive at the runway, hit a certain point, and stop as quickly as possible. And I struck aviation enthusiast gold on this flight. Right seat! That means a front row view of what's about to happen. We waved at all those beachgoers about to see us depart. We climbed to 1,500 feet, and St. Bart's came into view almost immediately. Our pilot turned toward the runway. My excitement could barely be contained. I don't know how I held this camera steady. Suddenly, the runway came into view, but it was obstructed, of course, by that hill. This approach is unlike anything else in the world. And, as with all of these airports, just because it's extreme doesn't mean it's dangerous. Pilots receive extra training for landing here, and they're all professionals operating airplanes specifically designed to handle things like this. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy this view. Of course, our pilot nailed the landing. This was one of the most incredible aviation experiences of my life, but there's still more to come. It's no wonder travelers are willing to brave that flight to get here. Still buzzing from the excitement of our trip, we explored St. Bart's capital, Gustavia. It's filled with the haute cuisine, high-end shopping, not to mention postcard perfect beaches. Don't get me wrong, as great as the aviation is here in the Caribbean, this is pretty nice too. This is a work trip, okay? I don't buy it. I'm working. No visit to St. Bart is complete without checking out the hill that obstructs the runway. So the next day, we decided to head to the airport early before our flight out. We arrived at the airport in time to drop off our bags before we climbed the hill. 
So we're gonna walk up to try to watch these approaches from the traffic circles up there. Now, you may be laughing right now at this hat, but it is doing a dang good, a very good job of keeping the sun off my black hair. Uh, I guess I need more gray at this point. This is uh, a lot steeper than it probably looks on YouTube. It's also hotter than it looks on YouTube. There's a well-worn path that makes the trek up a little bit easier, and a windsock that helps pilots, air traffic controllers, and more observant tourists than me. You do know that planes land into the wind generally, right? So take a look at that windsock. What does it tell you? We shouldn't have walked up this hill. <laughs> And sure enough, those airplanes were streaming in the other way. But hey, at least we got our steps in. Moral of the story, you don't always get what you want. Uh, so I guess we'll be having to come back here to St. Bart and uh, check it out again. But thankfully, our friends Ryan and Brian came in just after us and got plenty of incredible footage when the winds were right. Thanks so much to them for sharing. And be sure to check them out on Instagram for even more amazing aviation content. But it's time to begin our journey to Saba. First, we'll return to St. Martin, and then take another 10-minute flight over to Saba. Now, this runway presents its own challenges. First, it's only 1,300 feet long, making it the shortest commercial runway in the world. One side has a massive mountain, while the other three are sheer drops to the ocean below. All of this combines for unprecedented winds. Back in the terminal building in St. Bart, you'll find impressive views from the observation deck upstairs. There are also shops and a restaurant. Flights between St. Martin and St. Bart have more in common with bus schedules than traditional airline flights. They operate pretty much all day, every 30 minutes or so. The runway here is too short for big planes, so the operators have to compensate with volume. This little Britain Norman Islander would play a key role in just a matter of days. We had no idea what was in store for us. Downstairs, the waiting area behind Passport Control does not have enough seats, but does provide even more close-up views of the aviation action here, like of the Twin Otter we'd be on for the next two legs. Despite having seat assignments, it seems that boarding on Win Air is a free-for-all. Nobody really respected them, so we just grabbed a couple of empty seats like everybody else. And soon, we were on our way. St. Martin Airport appeared in no time, but we had to deviate a bit for traffic. With just one runway and a lot of planes, this sometimes happens. We quickly entered our final approach. I never get tired of landing over this beach. St. Martin was bustling, and it was looking like we might end up staying here. We just uh, ran into a, a viewer who happens to be a Win Air pilot who said hello, which was nice. We told him we were trying to get to Saba, and uh, he said he wasn't sure we were going to go because the winds are reversed, which also explains why we weren't able to get that killer footage up at, uh, at St. Bart. So we'll see what happens to this trip. But it turned out the aviation gods were smiling down on us on this day. We were called out right on time. That said, this was not the last time we'd hear about the winds on this trip. And wouldn't you know it, the same plane that brought us over from St. Bart's was taking us on to Saba. We're on our way to the world's shortest runway. This time, we were at the back of the airplane, and let's just say I was a little more excited than Suzanne. Ready? Again, just because these airports are extreme doesn't mean they're dangerous. That said, the excitement was real. Not only is this runway short, 
but it's perched on the side of a mountain with sheer drops to the sea below on three sides, and the fourth side is a nearly vertical cliff. Oh, and the winds are relatively unpredictable too. This is a tough landing for any pilot. The tension in the cabin was truly palpable. Thankfully, the airplanes, like this twin otter, that fly in and out of here are designed for these kinds of missions. But as always, it really comes down to the pilot, and ours certainly earned his round of applause today. As great as that was, it turned out our departure would be even more of a nail-biter. That was incredible. There was a tailwind. We landed with a tailwind. Wow, that was extreme. <laughs> This plane was loaded up and on its way back to St. Martin before we even left the airport. And they're out of here. So runways at, I would say, most commercial airports are probably over 10,000 feet. So this one is about a tenth of that. Incredible. That night, we took in one of the most beautiful sunsets we've ever seen, shared some pizza and went to bed. The next day, we explored the small town of Windwardside, where we stayed. What a cool town. Uh, this is called Windward Side here on Seba. Of course, we're here for the airport because, you know, that's what we're into. But it seems like a lot of people come here to Seba for the diving. It's apparently out of this world or under this world, maybe. Here's where we ate dinner last night. It's really good, really good pizza. See that point way up there? It's kind of like covered by clouds. That's the highest point in the kingdom of the Netherlands. Honest answer. Yes. Which do you prefer, Seba or St. Bart's? I'm a Seba gal. Uh, I was about to say I am too, but I'm a Seba guy. <laughs> Uh, this just feels more relaxed and like more like what the kind of travel that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. St. Bart's was beautiful and cool and uh, luxurious and all those, th those things, but this is just a, a more um, a chill, more chill place, you know? You probably knew this already, but we're not really fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we're in first class. Only green. It was time to bid a farewell to this Dutch islander, so we thought. On the way, we got fleeting glimpses of the runway, which emphasized just how small it is. After a far too short 24 hours here on Seba, it's time to uh, head back into the airport to depart. Now, the departure, I think, is even more incredible than the arrival, so uh, come and uh, join us for this one. Did you know it takes a plane a longer distance to take off than it does to land? So today, taking off should be interesting. Well, this has been a whirlwind few minutes for sure. Uh, let me get you up to speed. Right now there's a pretty significant crosswind uh, blowing across the runway and the airline has certain rules about whether they can land in that kind of condition. So they're trying to sort that out, whether the wind is gonna be that speed and that angle at, you know, when the plane gets here. So anyway, they're, they're sorting all that out. It's still unclear whether the plane goes. Now the problem is we've got to get to St. Martin. Uh, so we're trying to figure out some problem solving there. This reminds me so much of the Cardinal uh, when that train canceled. Uh, but we're a little bit more limited because we've also got to find a place to stay on the island, which is limited. So let me just put it this way. This is a challenging trip. As we waited for our fate, a Britain Norman Islander appeared, the same one we'd seen in St. Bart just a few days prior. But it's easy to see that crosswind and just how hard this pilot had to fight it. From here, things happened fast. Different rules for charters. As I watched the plane come in, the airline operations leader here on the ground mentioned the pilot of this plane might be willing to take some of us back. So a charter plane just landed and we snagged two seats on it with cash. Um, hopefully we'll be back in St. Martin in about 10, 15 minutes. This is one of the strangest experiences I've ever had. For $130 each, we were getting our first trip in a Britain Norman Islander. They use every inch of this runway for sure. Of all the flying we did on this trip, this departure was by far the most exciting.
This airplane first flew in the summer of 1982. It's extremely capable, and because of its utilitarian design, not to mention the highly capable pilot, it's no surprise that this airplane could make the trip while the larger Twin Otter operated by Wind Air could not. We were so fortunate to have been able to buy these seats and make it back to St. Martin. And because of that good fortune, you're not going to hear me complain about legroom on board here. This kind of flying is some of the most exciting for anyone, but particularly for aviation enthusiasts like you and me. I truly hope you can find the opportunity to make a similar trip. Every flight was fun, exciting, and unforgettable. The pilots, maintenance professionals, air traffic controllers, and countless others who work so hard to keep us flying shine in these challenging environments. And it's thanks to those professionals that these islands are as connected as they are, despite the challenges. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky. What kind of work are you doing exactly? Research. <laughs> Researching what? Film locations. <laughs> <laughs> Let me double check. Okay. 1,312 feet or 400 meters. <laughs> am I good or am I good? <laughs> good. Very confident as well. 